Welcome to another episode of Ministry Matters That Matter. Mark and I are at PTP Spark at the Forest Park Church of Christ in Valdosta, Georgia. My guest today is Mark Teske, and he is going to talk to us and share. He has experience in a wide variety of areas, but especially in the area of electronic media evangelism. And so I think you're going to be blessed by what he shares from his experiences because we're all doing that more and more. One of the, the jokes throughout the pandemic, if you can make a joke in that time period, but one of the comments often that I heard from preachers is that every preacher is now a tele-evangelist. So I think we've got an opportunity today to learn from someone who's been doing this for a, a large portion of his life. So tell me about your family. Tell me about your work experiences and about what you're doing now. Okay. Uh, I have five kids. been married for 33 years. Uh, two of them married and two grandkids. If you want pictures, I've got those. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, uh, I actually got into preaching a little bit later in life. Uh, my first degree is in accounting, worked uh, for an accounting firm, then in hospitals uh, for several years, and then went back to school, decided to become, wanted to become a preacher, did that, and uh, uh, reluctantly at first got into television work. And I've been stuck there for the last 18 years, okay. uh, seven years with the Gospel Broadcasting Network, uh, and these last three years as the host and producer of the Good News Today television program. Very good. Well, we're going to draw on that experience today. So I remember you coming in to speak in my electronic media evangelism class and talking to our students. So I'd like to kind of gear our questions in two different directions. First of all, talk to us about the opportunities that are available in getting the the good news of Jesus Christ out in the electronic media environment. And you, you mentioned a good thing about uh, COVID is now everybody realizes how important this really is. And, and as, as we talk about that, getting the word out to, uh, to the world around us, uh, the big problem, honestly, is not technical. It's more very practical because there's a lot of churches that are streaming their services. Uh, there's a lot of preachers that are doing uh, Bible studies and things like that through uh, electronic means, but who knows about it? And, and that really is the big key, is getting that word out as best you can. Uh, and, and to do that, you know, one of the most effective things we have uh, is social media. If it's used properly and we train people to use it properly, because mm -hmm. uh, you can have the best video in the world uh, and you can put it out on Facebook and your mama likes it and a few other people see it, and it stays down in the algorithm. Mm -hmm. uh, but if even a 20-member congregation, if every member of the congregation goes there, likes it, puts in a little comment, it starts kicking up the algorithm. Uh, and half those people share it. Right. And then it starts to build uh, and go viral is, mm -hmm. is the phrase that's often used. And that's how something starts to, to gain traction. You can do it with your dollars. You know, you can spend money and and get right. that to people. Uh, but uh, to get it really to start taking traction, you're going to have to use that organic growth. So a lot of folks don't realize, first of all, views are going to pay a fact. And uh, your algorithm algorithms look at views on anything you put out there or listens. But a lot of folks don't realize how important likes and shares and comments are in a wide variety of things, even books. For example, mm -hmm. if you're buying a book on Amazon, if there's a book you like and if you want others to like it, then you need to respond. You need to comment. You need to rate it. And one of the ways that members of the church can help is that if you know that there are good products out there, if you know that people are putting out uh, some things in the media world, in the electronic media world, that you feel like are good and sound and can help people, it is very important to like, to share, to comment, etc., because that is going to influence how easy it is found when people start doing, you know, searches of the web. 
Absolutely. And and that you know, shouldn't be discounted as we talk about it. Uh, another area, if you're going to be paying for things, uh, one thing that people don't realize is how effective that can be. And uh, part of that is because with uh, electronic advertising, you can get very, very specific who your target market is. And, and you could do something like this. You know, every congregation wants young families. Mm -hmm. Okay. And from within 10, a 10 mile radius of my church building, I want to target young families that are interested in some way in Christianity. Mm -hmm. and, and you can get that specific and you can record material for that specific demographic. You could even subdivide that further. Oh, there's a lot of Catholics. So we're going to target the tech Catholics and one message there. Baptists, we're going to hit them another way. People who have no church affiliation, hit them another way. And you can be very specific in what you said. It's going to take you a little time to develop that material, but more targeted, and you'll have a better response being hitting that person where so they are. So you can set it up where it is more apt to be seen by that target audience. Right. And and as you're advertising, you know, you're going to spend some money. And the thing is, something like that, if you're restricting it to 10 miles of your building, you know, if you put a budget of, say, $20 a month, Mm -hmm. You can get a lot of advertising right. for that, which may be more cost effective for you than a newspaper ad. Right. Sorry to all the people in newspapers. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> so talk to me about just before we get into some more tech stuff, talk about the different works you've been in and the different ways you have been a part of getting the good news out through media. Mm -hmm. Um in most, my, I started my career in television, and where I am now are in syndicated television programs. Mm -hmm. We're buying airtime in different markets, and, and that you typically tend to get uh, people outside the church are a, a primary audience gotcha. that you get. Uh, for instance, several years ago, we got a, a Nielsen rating by accident in New Orleans, mm -hmm. uh, and there, you know, it didn't set the Nielsen ratings on fire. We had a between ten and eleven thousand estimated audience. But you look in the broadcast area, and there's about a thousand members of the church hmm. attending in that broadcast area. Yes. So we're hitting ten times as many people. Yes. A few of them in the so church, the but a lot of people outside the church are hearing the message, uh, and, and that is hitting them. And one of the things that we try to do with this type of broadcasting is turn those viewers into visitors. Okay. That's where we get success. You know, we try Bible correspondence courses. Uh, but getting them into the church building uh, is where we're going to secure their soul. Okay, so is there a way to link that to local churches? Does that make sense? How could how could local churches use this to connect people to them? Does that oh, make any sense? Absolutely. Uh, and uh, we do this, and Search of the Lord's Way does this. Uh, when we broadcast the program, there's a list of all the supporting congregations at the end. So people see that and say, oh, okay. These are congregations where uh, where I can go, uh, and, and that's pretty effective at channeling people that direction. Okay. Uh, Search does that. They also have some nationwide broadcasts, uh, and they say, contact us, and we'll get you in touch with a congregation. Uh, but working with, with a television work uh, can get you in doing that. One of the things that we do with ours, uh, we send an email out every week. This is what we're going to be talking about on this week's program. And the second section, here's how you can use it evangelistically okay. based upon this. Go talk to your neighbor about this. Tell them to watch the program and uh, develop that interest. Okay, so are past programs warehoused anywhere? In other words, could is there a website people could go to to watch past episodes? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and one of the things we've done, uh, we use a service called Subsplash, and that gives us an Apple app. Android app, Kindle Fire app, okay. Roku channel, Apple TV channel, and website as well. Uh, so you could look at, for Good News Today in any of those, and they're all linked to that one. Uh, so you can go search by content. So if, you, if you've got a particular subject you want to study or you're doing a lesson on and you're doing some research and you want to hear somebody else's thoughts, mm -hmm. they could go and search. Okay. Yeah. And, and one nice thing about our program, uh, we've been broadcasting for 16 years now. Uh, like Tom Holland, he did Tom's Pastime Porch. Yes. That's part of Good News Today. Yeah. And we have some of those available in our apps as well. People just love those. Okay. So let's let's 
transition a little more to the tech side. We've t dealt with that some. Let's start, first of all, with, you know, one of the things you talked to my students about was things to think about when you're in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like, my first question to think about when you're in this position, and then the next thing, what are some tips for the person that's doing the producing and the other side of the equation? So when you're at the mic, if it's audio, or in front of the camera, if it's video, do you have any tips for us? Uh, yeah, one of the things uh, uh, that I would say, and if you've never watched yourself recorded on uh, video before, it's a humbling experience. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it, it really is. Uh, and in doing that, you will always have nervous energy. The question is, how is that energy going to come out? Uh, are you going to be tapping your foot or something like that and trying to work to get rid of those idiosyncrasies. Uh, the same thing happens with our speech. Um, well, um, I'm going to um, talk. Uh, um, <laughs> yes. And, and if as painful as it is to hear yourself, you need to. Uh, it will humble you, but it'll also teach you. And if it irritates you, it's going to irritate people who listen to you. And it'll make your preaching better. Yes. Uh, so that's that would be my my main thing as you're uh, actually producing it. And remember who your audience is. Right. Uh, you know, no matter where you're preaching, how you're preaching, that's always a critical lesson. On the technical side, uh, one thing I will say: audio uh, people will tolerate a bad video, but they will not to tolerate bad audio. So whatever you're doing, uh, audio wise, should be your number one priority. Uh, and especially if you're doing like a podcast uh, and, and we're not talking about, you know, spending tens of thousands of dollars. If you spend a thousand dollars in a podcasting setup, you have a, a superior podcasting setup. Right. Uh, you don't even have to spend that much to have a really, really good quality. So do it. Uh, when it comes to video, one of the biggest things I see uh, is people mess up the lighting, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like uh, the camera we're recording this on. We could turn off the lights and we would still get a picture, mm -hmm. but it would be a very grainy picture. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that shows a, a lack of quality. Right. Uh, so just blast the light on it uh, and, and that will help quite a bit. That's probably the biggest mistake I see Okay. when it comes to video. It's too dark. Yeah. Too dark. The other thing, look at your background. What What's behind you? Is it distracting? Uh you know, the, the, the old joke was, uh, it, it's not a sound program unless the holy ficus tree is behind you. <laughs> and everybody used the ficus tree. Yeah. Uh, and, and it was... I'm not sure they can see our tree over here. <laughs> our fake palm tree. Fake whatever palm that tree. Is. Uh, and, and okay, that's, that's fine, but it's been done before. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Do something that, somebody, that people haven't done before, but you don't want it to be so far out there that it distracts mm -hmm. from what it is you're trying to say. Uh, but something that's pleasing. Uh, you want to avoid uh, like a bright white mm -hmm. for a background because that will blow out your camera and, and make uh, the lighting very difficult. Okay. And then the other thing, uh, get your wife involved, <laughs> if you're a guy, and coordinate the colors. Uh, because, you know, in this room, that green shirt looks spectacular. You're wearing a blue shirt. It might not look look as good. Yeah. Uh, so looking at those things and, and uh, consider me sexist, if you will, but women generally have a better eye for that than guys do. Yeah. Well, and I've had, uh, I know with the guys I work with, they've talked about they prefer solid ties than ties, for example, that have a lot of design on it and uh, can, can can be hard on a mm -hmm. camera. I know, for example, this is just a simple GoPro that I use for these. Normally, Caleb Sampson is recording these when we're in studio, and he's the professional. I'm not. But I do a number of these when I'm on the road, so I'm just using a GoPro. And I initially got it for my beekeeping videos. And so, but one of the first things I did, because sound is an issue, is I got the media mod package for it that has the windscreen. Mm -hmm. And I saw or heard a significant difference 
in the audio quality once I got it. And I've heard that. I know Caleb Sampson has talked to me a lot about that, that it's it's all about the audio. And so I do want to re-emphasize that. I know one of the things that I found in doing television work and so forth is remembering that the camera is a person and the camera is actually a number of people. And so I don't know if you've noticed as as we're talking, we'll turn and look over here because as far as we're concerned, there's three of us at this table. So I'm looking at you sometimes. I'm looking at you sometimes, even though I know some of you, there might be more than one uh, in your location. I believe I really believe that is critical to re to view the camera as someone it, and I've even had folks talk about they actually picture a, a specific person there as they're talking to them. And I've so actually be helpful. I put a teddy bear on top of the lens <laughs> so that somebody realizes that that's where I need to talk. That's good. That's good. Although I'm, my problem would be not laughing when I see the teddy bear. <laughs> Well, are there any other things that you think about that might be helpful? Because what we're finding is that more and more ministers, first of all, one thing I'm seeing is more congregations are hiring what I call media ministers. Now, they're going by different names, but they're hiring people with skills in electronic media evangelism. But I'm finding even on top of that, that in almost every congregation, the preacher, youth minister, etc., are being called on. You have to know something about how all of the media in the auditorium works. You've got to know something about projectors and programs mm -hmm. and PowerPoints, live streaming. Most congregations live stream. Often that falls to the preacher or the youth minister. And so they're having to do a lot of this, podcasting, blogging, vlogging, all those things are more common. You know, any just general things about any of that that might be good for us to know. And one of the things, you know, as you talk about adding these things on, that adds workload. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you're trying to develop content, uh, a concept that I call sustainability, can I keep this going? Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that, that you shouldn't underestimate, if you want to do a like a video blog, look at your past bulletin articles mm -hmm. and, and use those and go through those. You've already done the work. Uh, another thing that you can do is, okay, this is what I'm teaching on my Sunday, in my Sunday morning class. This is a 45 minute lesson I've developed mm -hmm. and I'm going to summarize that in five minutes. And that's going to be a podcast. I'm going to release six months from now. Gotcha. Everybody will have forgotten it. Record it today. Keep it on the shelf. Keep doing that. Uh, and, and get yourself, ahead so that material's already there. You're not having to duplicate your work. Yeah, I found it's important to plan ahead and think ahead. Um, so I don't want to, for example, this this program comes out on Thursday mornings. We took a break during Thanksgiving or during the Christmas break actually. But you kind of you don't want to suddenly be, hey, it's Wednesday. We've got to get something together. And so I like to stay several weeks ahead and like to think ahead. And one of the things that I do with things like this is I think about where I'm going to be. So like if I'm on our campus at Heritage, we we may do it in a, a studio mm -hmm. where Caleb takes care of that. But I also have the privilege of traveling a lot. So I look, run into people. So if, if you're doing podcasts and those kinds of things, you might look at your calendar. Where am I going to be? For example, I was talking to another person here, and we've we're we've already scheduled when I'm at the lectureship at at Free that we're going to do an interview with him, and I'll probably do a couple of others other people. Yeah. So you can kind of think about where am I going to be? I'm doing a summer series at this congregation. Hey, I could interview their their preacher or uh, even whatever you might be putting out. Just think about encounters you're going to have where you can gain from the knowledge and experience of others. Yeah, and that fits perfectly in the format of what you're doing. But th but that thinking ahead, like with a television program, uh, I go in next week and we'll be recording uh, through April, mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, this is with the middle of January. Mm -hmm. So we're that far ahead, just trying to keep that material because things always come up. There's always something that happens. Mm -hmm. And when you have enough cushion, you can give your audience that regular diet of fresh material without killing yourself. 
Well, if you're already doing, you know, I, I think I've been at congregations where I had radio programs or I had one minute, five minute, 15 minute radio programs, like at one congregation. Well, then I was at a congregation where we had a television program. But so I've kind of worked in, in those different worlds. I remember specifically at one of those congregations where you're doing two sermons, two Bible classes, and five 15-minute radio programs a week. That can be overwhelming. You mix in a ladies' Bible class, you're doing a personal evangelism Bible study. So one of the things I had to do quickly is say, okay, how do I make this work? Well, I started doing some research into my audience. And what I found out is very few members of our congregation listened to the program. It had a wide listenership. Mm -hmm. It's just that it was a fairly small number of our members because they're hearing the preacher before me, and now they hear us regularly. So that's not a program they tune into. The only ones who watched it or listened to it regularly were our shut-ins. And so I said, okay, we can make this work. So what happened is... My 15-minute programs then became portions of my sermons in my Bible classes. And I found by doing that, you know, let's say you have three points in a poem. <laughs> and, you know, you know, one of those points can become an episode. And I found that worked for me. So you, you've got to think through what, how do I perpetuate this? Uh, how do I give it longevity? while also thinking about your audience, because I may make decisions and say, okay, I can reuse this work I've done, but half of my audience has already heard it. So knowing your audience is also very helpful. Yeah. And one thing about that, I hate to bust anybody's bubble, uh, but if you want to be get yourself humbled, uh, call members of the congregation on Tuesday <laughs> and ask about your Sunday morning sermon. Yes. Half of them won't remember what you talked about. Uh, and, and so I, I think we're a lot more sensitive to reusing material uh, yeah. than, than, than the audience is. Yes. Well, that's our time for today. I appreciate Mark very much for sharing with us today and appreciate you joining us. And, you know, we're in a brave new world and each new generation presents new challenges, but it also presents new opportunities mm -hmm. for sharing the gospel. And so we're just talking about one of those new opportunities. Just know that wherever you are, if you're serving in the name of the Lord and you're teaching God's truth to people in whatever format, then you are making a difference. You're changing eternity and you're in our prayers. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Ministry Matters That Matter. Mm -hmm.